School days are a source of nostalgia for me as myriads of memories come rushing back, changing my mood completely. One such happy memory was when the whole school, except the junior section, was taken to watch a movie, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. When I think about it now, I understand what a hectic day it might have been for the teachers. But, we were having the time of our lives. You might be thinking about what is so special about going to the theaters. Well, 10 to 12 years back, it meant a huge thing because until we reached a certain age, we were allowed to go out with our friends unsupervised. So, although we had to sit according to our roll numbers after the lights went off, we quickly shifted to our seats among our close friends. Although I am a Potterhead and would not miss a scene for anything in the world, sitting beside my friends and gossiping about the movie felt worthwhile. Well, memorable things usually happen with or around people or things you love. School was a time in our lives when we still retained our innocence even though there were numerous diversions around us. Friends, study, sports, and simple things mean more than money and peace, which we lack when we grow up. So, I guess, as our mind is free from worldly corruption and our eyes are filled with dreams and aspirations for the future, we have the most unforgettable time of our life during this phase. Kindness is a vital part of a person's nature, especially in this day and age, where people tend to be more self-centered. There are times when an individual might be helpless and in need of assistance. In such situations, it is always important to show compassion and uplift others. An incident where another person was kind to me was when I was a pre-teenager and a stranger helped me out of a distressing situation. Although I never interacted with this person for a second time, he has remained in my good wishes. This incident occurred when I was 10 or 11 years old and went shopping with my mother. The place that we visited was a few train stations away from home. It was a particularly busy day, and the station was bustling with people. Amidst the crowd, I got stranded and separated from my mother. I remained at the spot where I lost my mother in the crowd and started to panic. Eventually, a train came into the station, and in a moment of confusion, I boarded the train, thinking my mother had done the same. After traveling a few stations in the wrong direction, I broke down, and the people on board asked me to get off the train after I had told them I was lost. After I got off the train, I was in a completely unknown location. Helpless and in fear, I started walking in the direction I came from along the train tracks when this stranger who was also walking in the opposite direction noticed my panicked expression and asked me what was wrong. After hearing my plight, he took me to the railway police station and stayed there till my mother came to pick me up. Although that day was one of the worst days of my life, I am forever grateful to that stranger because he is the reason I reunited with my mother after the terrible circumstances I had faced.
To be honest, I was scared of handling little children as I feel they're very fragile and may get hurt. This changed when my little sister came into my life. She was named Abba, meaning glow or light. Abba was a cute little bundle of joy and everybody paid more attention to her, which in the beginning, made me envious. Feeling that I was being left out, one day, my mother explained to me why she needed more care and gave me the responsibility of protecting her. She was chubby and smiled whenever I cooed to her. She had thick, matted hair, which I liked to comb and I put a little anklet on her left foot. I knew she loved me as she used to make happy sounds whenever I was around her. My sister likes chocolates the most. As a result, when she grew up a little, I used to gift her varieties of chocolates that I collected just for her. We loved spending time with each other and playing video games. I used to take her to parks quite often and then treat her. Once when I was down with a fever, she never left my side. Many people comment that we are two sides of the same coin, but for me, we are pieces of the same soul. Creating something new for good is always a great responsibility that not everyone can handle. Although many people can make something, true art or artists are very few as only prodigies can produce something that inspires others. To be honest, I am not a connoisseur of art, but there are a few many names from whom I find the motivation to be original and unique. One such great personality is Charlie Chaplin. Sir Charles Spencer Chaplin, aka Charlie Chaplin, is one of the world's most renowned entertainers who captured the true essence of a common man. With his charming personality and endless talents, he rose to fame in the era of silent movies and beyond. Apart from his comic antics as, Little Tramp, he is revered by many as the first international movie star who popularized the medium of films and made the audience aware that movies were also a viable source of entertainment other than plays and vaudeville. Later, he went on to become a filmmaker and composer. Some of the movies he had acted and directed in are, The Kid, The Golden Rush, Limelight, A Countess from Hong Kong, The Great Dictator, Modern Times, City Lights, to name a few. Despite facing hardships and being pulled into several controversies, he created works that motivate people never to give up. He represented human conditions in a simple yet strong way that was not only humorous but also easy to understand. He forged his way into the world from poverty to being one of the most influential personalities in history through sheer work, dedication, and infinite talent. Whenever I feel down in life, I always go back to reading quotes by a few personalities and one of them is definitely, Charlie Chaplin.
Medicinal plants used to be a whole chapter in our science books when we were in high school. So, I know a lot of medicinal plants, which I have read or heard about. Those are mainly neem, tulsi, ashwagandha, ashwagandha, aloe vera, sage, fenugreek, etc. Each of the plants is of different medicinal importance. Some can be consumed directly, and others have to be taken with other herbs. Today I will be talking about one of the most essential and common plants, that is Tulsi. Tulsi is widely present in all the regions of India. In some parts of the country, it is considered holy as well. Thus it has the name, holy basil. It is grown in almost every Indian house. This plant does not need much care like other plants, but it should be given the basics. The scientific name of Tulsi is Osimum tenuiflorum. In English, we call it, holy basil, or just, basil. The green leaves of the tree have a sharp aroma and flavor. You can easily chew it. Tulsi leaves are mainly oval in shape with curvy edges and slightly sharp tips. The plant is of great importance. It helps to cure your stomach disorders and respiratory problems. Most of the cough syrup we use contains Tulsi. It is said that two leaves of Tulsi in one spoon of honey can cure your diseases and can keep you fit. It is also used in treating digestion, kidney stone, and diabetes. It also assists in curing stress and headache. Ayurveda has been dependent on this plant for a long time now.